Welcome back to Thistle Hill Farmstead. This is the fourth video in our series of videos uh, repairing the hydrostatic transmission in this John Deere Z920M mower. Uh, in this video, we're going to be reassembling the hydrostatic transmission in preparation to reinstalling it in the mower. So if you haven't caught the other videos, look in the description below and I'll put links to all the previous videos leading up to this one. And if you like this video, press that like button. It really helps me out. And subscribe and ring that bell notification so that anytime we post a new video, you'll get notified. So out of all the parts I got, um, I've got the seal, I got the bearing, but it looks like this piece here is what I really need right here. And that uh, that has the rubber um, like bushing around it. So I just found something very interesting related to uh, this uh, exploded diagram here and uh, getting the parts. If you look at uh, how this comes together up here, let me bring it in just a bit. You see it shows uh, this little dust cover. It shows a seal, shows a snap ring, and then it shows the bearing. And that's it. That's all it shows. It doesn't show this piece, which is an intermediate seal. Um, So it's interesting, I ordered a new axle just in case that other axle was bad. And I just took a peek at this axle. And if you look at the bottom of this axle, ta-da, it looks different than the bottom of this one. So apparently what they did was they did away with this part, which is kind of the intermediate seal on the axle that then slides into this seal that's on the housing. So it looks like what they're doing instead is this is the same size. So it looks like they're eliminating this seal altogether and then just using this larger diameter uh, part on the axle to seal around this seal. So my dilemma is, uh, I they did send me the new seal to this axle uh, and I have a new seal here which I had replaced this before so that is a new seal in there I don't I'm not really going to replace it um, but my dilemma is do I use this new axle or do I use the existing one now the existing one looks fine um, remember we had a little bit of trouble getting it out because uh, this was just a little had a little bit of a nick on it but I was able to clean that up just a little bit. So now everything slides back on just fine. Um, and there's really not much play, no more than, than what's here. You see, that's not really super tight. It wiggles back and forth, but this one wiggles no more than that. So um, I think what I'll do since I have this uh, seal, is just go ahead and use it. I did fill the shaft here and there's really nothing wrong with the shaft that I can tell. Uh, it feels fine. I think this seal was just worn out. It looks pretty much flat on the inside almost. So it's quite worn. Um, so this one I'm hoping is gonna be, gonna do the trick. So I believe what I'll do is uh, just go back with this seal in and uh, see if that fixes the problem. Lord help me if it doesn't because I don't want to have to pull this thing back out. But if it doesn't, I can always pull it back out and just put this axle shaft in. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where, I don't know, you want to go back with the original equipment uh or do you want to upgrade and then it's going to be different than the other side 
I, I think I'll, I'll go back with this one and just try it out. And, you know, worst case scenario is I just have to pull the thing out again. But uh, now I know how to do it. And uh, it should not be as much trouble as the first it was the first time. So let's do that. Let me go ahead and uh, pop this new seal on here. So this is um, this is the part number. There's the Tough Torx part number, one eight seven Q zero six one one eight eight zero, and it's called a sleeve. Not a seal, but uh, if I can get it open. Yeah, so this looks this looks a lot better than the and you can see here too. This outside sleeve is. Uh, Pretty boogered up compared to the uh, new one, so I'm sure that's why that was leaking around around it. Okay, so I'm gonna get just a little bit of just a little bit of oil and put on there. This should slide right down on. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. Uh, that uh, ring that was on there too. Uh, this is the one that was there. So I did get a new one. This one's worn a lot. Well, where is that new ring? see it when I do with it okay uh, quick break while I look for that ring and I'll come back ha found it it had fallen and was standing right here on its end so this is the new part here that's gonna go on first and that is Tough Torque Part 187Q06342 and that is the washer. Let's open this bad boy up. This washer goes on here first. Okay. Then new seal. Don't quite know how that slides on there. Definitely don't want to uh don't want to mess it up, so I'm gonna make sure I go straight down with it. So what I did to get this down on here is I did just use uh, my channel locks and uh, just tap this down on like that. I think that's probably good. And I'm not quite sure how far it was supposed to go, but... Uh, I think 
that's uh, that's good. So I reviewed the video where I disassembled it, and it did come apart like this. Ring, this bushing, uh, the other ring, and then this, when I pulled it out, it was like this, with this part to the outside and then the retaining clip. So I assume that is supposed to go in that hole like that. Okay, makes sense that that would uh, hold in that little uh, retention area there to keep it from falling out underneath. So, uh, hey, who knows? So that's the way we're gonna stick it back together. So let's, All right, so we're ready to put our axle back in. And uh, so we've got my bushing in here. The way this goes is uh, these kind of half moon sections go to the outside, just like that. Left my gear in, so it should be ready to go. And I'm gonna slide my shaft in, being very careful not to damage my new seal that I put in there. And then once I get it up here to the uh, to the gear, I want to engage uh, these splines here. All right, got those in. And then we want to put this piece back in. And this goes with this uh, indention facing out. And that's so that uh, the snap ring or retaining ring can go in there. It doesn't really snap in, it's just a retaining ring. So I'm gonna put this in. And I believe I had this just like this. Okay, so that slides on in. Okay. And then, uh, we can put our, uh, ring, our retaining ring in here. And I don't want that to fall down, so I want to grab it and pull. There we go. So what you saw what I did was I slid that forward so that uh, it that retaining ring was held in that slot there. And then uh, I also want to push that forward and get this all engaged in here there we go okay so it's all back together now you see there's very little play looks good i've got my new uh new bushing new seal use the same old axle and uh same retaining rings and everything so uh next we'll need to put back in this little gear assembly which just drops in like this. Okay, and we're ready to go back together. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I gotta clean up all this sealant around the case and then on the, the back side of the case over here. So I'll do that and uh, then we'll put it back together. So I cleaned up this the case best I could. It had a lot of the uh, sealant on it from the last uh, job that it had. But I think I got it pretty clean. It looks nice. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my new Tough Torque sealant. This is uh, item number 1A64609950. And apply this and reassemble my case. This is all in one silicon 
aluminum okay uh, the directions say what do the directions say because I don't have oh, right, right, let's see. it's pretty bad when you have to have two different pair of glasses <clears throat> Remove dirt and grease from surface to be sealed dry thoroughly. Cut nozzle to desired bead size. Uh, a 1 16th and 1 8th inch is adequate for most applications. For best results, results circle all holes on a applied surface with the silicone sealant. Allow product to skim over for approximately 10 or 20 minutes before assembling. Silicone is... Uh, Tack free in about 30 minutes and will cure in about 12 to 24 hours. Length of time for full cure depends upon thickness and temperature and humidity. Okay. All right. So everything is fairly clean. <clears throat> I'm going to get uh, a blade. Well, let me see if I can do it with this. Well, let me get a blade. I'll cut it at an angle. So let me try about right here. Uh, that's probably too thin, so let me do a little bit more. Yeah, that may be okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right i think that'll do it so i'm gonna let that sit for the uh time that it says 15 to uh 20 minutes so it's been the recommended time to let the sealant uh kind of harden up a bit on the case here so now we're going to go ahead and put this case back on let's see how it goes it's going to go like this these bearings here go there this one is there okay let's see if i can set this on without dropping it Okay, and then uh, if you remember yesterday, I did this little diagram where uh, I marked the different size or different lengths of bolts that came out. And I've got my bolts over here to the side laid out. And I'll start with my A bolts. Okay. Here, 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 skip that one, go here, and then here, 
here and here. The rest are my B bolts. Go here. And three in a row. One, two, three. And then one on the corner. Two more. One, two. And then three more in a row over here. One, two, three. Okay. So let's get these all started. Okay, and then I have the, uh, the two long bolts, the C bolt, to go here. do have the torque specs on these that I got from Tough Torque. So for these 12, I think they're actually 10 millimeter bolts, but it's a 12 millimeter wrench. Uh, they're recommending uh, 17 to 18 foot pounds uh, on those. So now I'm just going to snug these up a bit. I'm going in a kind of an alternating pattern so I can bring the case down evenly. this one over here all together. Okay, so they're all coming down pretty good now. Okay. I'm going to get a marker so I can mark these when I start torquing them down so I don't miss any. Do 
there are a lot of it. Let me get a marker. Went and grabbed a couple of Sharpies so I can mark those bolts. And um, like I said, the uh, Tough Torx recommended 17 to 18 foot pounds. So what I did, and I know that's kind of hard to see, but what I did was went to 20, zero, and then backed off to 17 and locked it down. So that's, that's what I've got set up. Don't typically like to use an extension when I'm torquing anything, but uh, the fact that these bolts are so small and it's such a light torque, that extension is not going to make much of a difference. Get them all snugged up here. Starting to get tight. Ooh, I know this case is aluminum, so it makes me kind of nervous. It's starting to get tight because my blocks are starting to shimmy around. Okay, there was the first one.
Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see if I got this one. All right. I believe I have them all. So I'm just going to go back around now. Let me just check and make sure. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, bum. Yep, I've got them all, so I'm just going to go around now and give them one last check. Okay. All right, excellent. Let me back off my tension now. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we've got everything reassembled back together. Um, got our new. Uh, New sleeve in, new seal, new dust cap, and it all back together. So I'm gonna let that set overnight as they recommend to seal all of that uh, sealant, let it dry properly. And then tomorrow we will uh, see about reinstalling this unit in the mower.